Let's talk about the science behind the Briscoe brothers and which boxers and MMA fighters I would compare Kenny King and Shane Taylor to. Hello and welcome once again to Technique Tuesdays. I'm Joe Hendry and this is the show where I give you the inside information on all the action that you see on Ring of Honor television. First of all, let's take a look at Soldiers of Savagery versus the Briscoes. We've heard it across many different sports and disciplines, but it was perhaps Chael Sonnen that said it best. The ruthless execution of the basics is what leads to World Championship victories. And there's no better demonstration of this than the start of this matchup when Jay Briscoe and Moses lock up. We got Moses in here starting off the hard hitter of SOS. The lockup is also referred to as the collar and elbow tie-up, and it's when you basically link arms with your opponent. By locking up with them, you get a feel for how strong they are, how heavy they are, and it gives you a chance to strategize and perhaps adapt what you are gonna do throughout the matchup. If the lockup ends up in a stalemate, you have a few options. The one that Moses has gone for is the side headlock, which can be very effective indeed. And what you need to do is exactly what Moses has done here, is ensure that your thumb is pointing inwards. Because if your thumb is pointing the wrong way, if you claim the head like this, you will get the meat side of your arm against your opponent's face. Whereas if your thumb is pointing this way, you will get the blade of your wrist into the face of the opponent. What you will notice from this position is that Jay Briscoe has actually fed his left arm through the grip and he's used that to take his own side headlock, leaving Moses with a decision. Is he going to try and use a technical maneuver to get out of this or is he going to take it to the next level and is he going to use Jay Briscoe's momentum against him? Let's take a look. Nice drop down, some good wrestling here. Leap frog and a show As Jay Briscoe hits the ropes and comes back, Moses opts to drop down, or as us Brits say, sleep, because it rhymes with leap. You go sleep, leap, or as the Americans say, drop down and leap frog. After the leapfrog, Moses has been smart to stay stationary and wait and prepare and solidify himself for the oncoming collision with Jay Briscoe. But here is where the brilliance of the Briscoes comes to fruition. Watch this. Jay Briscoe is about to attack an area of the body where mass does not matter. Shoulder tackle down. Oh, wow! Now he an gets elbow off. to the jaw, and that is followed up with a brutal kick right to the chin. It does not matter about the difference in weight or size. If you take a clean shot to the chin, it is bad news and is going to disorientate your opponent. Now this is where we truly see the brilliance of the Briscoes because for about 45 seconds, what we're treated to is an onslaught of attacks to the same area, the face. Marcus tagged in, drop kick right to the face. This is where it gets interesting. The Briscoes will only switch body part when they know they've got total control. So after they've done enough work on the head, what starts to happen is the opponent will perhaps look to protect that area, leaving the vital organs vulnerable, and that is when the Briscoes truly go to work, utilizing their full time that they've got both in the ring and just attacking the midsection of Moses. Tag team brilliance, and that's a scientific way of looking at how the Briscoes gain control in tag team matchups. Lastly, I want to take a look at one more sign of true experience from the Briscoes. Mark Briscoe is in the ring and goes for what is known as a back suplex, but it becomes very clear that Moses is too heavy for Mark to lift. It's not going to work. Now, a lot of inexperienced competitors would perhaps try, try, and try again. Moses is buckled over. Instead of going underneath and going for the back suplex, Mark frees himself from that grip, instead goes over the top and hits a Russian leg sweep. That could have been a mistake for an inexperienced experienced competitor, but for Mark Briscoe, it was just a split second change that kept them in control. Gotta shake his, come on, oh really man? Oh. Next on, up, man. let's talk about the hard hitting come encounter on, between Kenny King and Shane Taylor. Oh, the sign of Whoa! If we look at comparing them to boxers and MMA athletes, for example, King is much more of a Floyd Mayweather or a Dominic Cruz in that he's looking to land his shots and to evade the counter attacks. He's looking to hit and run basically, use his speed and his agility to pick his shots and get out of the way of the haymakers coming from Shane Taylor. 
Shane Taylor's approach is much more in keeping with a Mike Tyson or a Conor McGregor. He's looking for that big shot that is going to take out his opponent. And that clash of styles has very interesting results. Here's the deal with Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor told me the reason why Kenny King was able to put him... Oh! Oh, oh my God! One thing I do want to talk about that's particularly interesting is when Shane Taylor comes forward with a flurry of strikes against Kenny King. Let's have a look against this. Bateman, but from here on out, there's the Shane Ooh. Taylor. Shane Taylor goes to strike him. Kenny parries the attack, and it means that Shane's momentum continues forward. That leaves him vulnerable, and then when the time is right, Kenny uses that opportunity to strike the ribs of Shane Taylor. One thing that's very interesting about Kenny King throughout this matchup is he has a unique blend of technique, speed and power. So you'll notice there are several evasions which Kenny follows with a very impressive, powerful suplex. It's really the combination of the two. There's a move called the up and over, but Kenny used this earlier in the matchup, it was successful, but when he tried to hit it a second time, Shane Taylor knew exactly what was coming and caught him for that devastating maneuver. It's Shane Taylor oh. and he welcomes Kenny King to the land! That's it. Welcome to the land! Yeah. Who's the land? Dang. Two, three! If he hits it, he it's it. over, and that's exactly what happened. Shane Taylor was able to take this victory and elevate his status within Ring of Honor, but let's not take away from the explosive, powerful athleticism and the speed of Kenny King. This is two world-class professionals, and both these matchups showed why Ring of Honor is presenting the best professional wrestling in the world today.